Well, I've tried to record this three times and the Wi-Fi keeps going out. So we'll see if this works this time. I'm Megan Fox with pjmedia.com and I have poured myself a mega pint of red wine for this next installment of the Johnny Depp via, uh, I keep saying that, versus Amber Heard trial, which is going on. And I have put together a little movie for you of all my favorite parts of this trial that I thought I'd play tonight before I went to bed. Got my bed hair going on and my jammies on. Not real exciting, I know. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this video up. I have used the streaming from Nick Ricada's uh, live stream, uh, Ricada Law, which is one of my favorite channels. And um, I disagree. Uh, let me go back. Okay. Uh, this is probably the closest I'm going to get to coming on Ricada Law. Uh, and <laughs> I do love the channel, but I'm not an attorney, so I probably won't get an invite. But I would love to go on that program and give them, I don't know, a jury perspective, perhaps, uh, or a journalist perspective, perhaps. I am, I'm not a lawyer, but I am a lawyer groupie, and I do enjoy watching the lawyers. I am coming to you from in front of the Black Pearl, which is uh, what I put on the green screen every time I talk about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, because. Um, I think he should have retained his his role at Disney, and I think they suck for letting him go. Now, it, it, we should mention that all of the clips you're going to see here today are plaintiffs or witnesses. The defense has not yet put on their witnesses. I expect after this, though, that Amber better have some really good witnesses and some really good evidence that she was harmed by Johnny Depp in some way. Uh, because after you'll see what I'm talking about, because when we get through this, you're going to have an opinion. You're going to have some thoughts. Now, these are not in any particular order. I made myself some cards to set it up so that I remember. Um, these are not in particular order. This is just the way I wanted to put it together with what I saw going through it. And if I were a member of the jury, how I would feel. Let's get started. Don't forget to check out the merch store, by the way. All kinds of uh, glassware in there for you to keep your favorite beverages in uh, and support the channel because YouTube continues to demonetize me for no damn reason all the time. Okay. Amber on the Island. Okay. This very first clip is going to be um, Johnny Depp talking about Amber's behavior with the son of one of his friends who he had invited to the Island. Uh, the son was 18 years old and Amber's behavior was so bad. Johnny had to ask her to leave. Let's get started. He tried to make a point. She would talk over him and then it started to get quite rude. She got, she got mean um, and she got loud. And then his, I believe it was his 18 year old boy who was, he was, he was getting ready to go to a really very bright, bright, brilliant kid. He entered the uh, conversation because these, this was something to do with what he'd studied in school and he knew quite a lot about it and he voiced his opinion and uh, Ms. Heard demeaned that young man <laughs> to the point of where he, where he, he burst into uh, tears. Whoa. She made an 18 year old cry, an 18 year old boy cry. Wow. Well, um, and it was at that point that I had spoken to Ms. Heard and said, that's, that's just unacceptable. It, that behavior is unacceptable. You have no right to, 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 to demean that boy to, to, to be, you cannot always be right. You should try being wrong sometime because you might learn something. And then um, I asked her, I asked her to, I thought it was best that she leave the island. <clears throat> she sounds pleasant. Damn. Send her home. Get on the, on the plane and get the hell out. All right. So there are several instances where Johnny starts talking about trying to get away from Amber. I got something in my mouth. What is it? <laughs> he keeps talking about trying to get away from her, and we see example after example of this. Where were you trying to go, if you can recall? Anywhere. Away. 
And why did you ask Ms. Hurd if she wanted to smack you in the ear again? She had given me a good chop in the ear, you know, one of those where um, leaves you ringing, you know, mm. and um, it was not long before that. And so I thought maybe this will make you happy. Will it make you happy to, would you like to hit me in the ear again? Would that, would that make you feel better? Will that make you stop this? Would have done anything to have stopped outside of taking anything to some physical level. I disagreed with that wholeheartedly. That's not me. It's not who I've ever been. It's not who I'll ever be. It's good testimony. Excellent. Very good. Excellent. Mr. Depp, uh... Very good and very credible. Uh, that came across to me, and I think to the jury, if I'm sitting on that jury, um, I bought that 100%. I don't believe that that's the guy he is. I don't believe that he's an abuser. I believe that there are plenty of witnesses who have seen him do nothing in response to her aggression. Uh, and so I don't believe, I don't believe that he, I believe every word he just said there, I think that came across extremely sincere. Let's move on. Um, I'm going to play another audio recording. This is now for that recording. You believe him? What Mr. Rock yeah. yep. played for you today? It's yeah. Ex. Yep. Yeah. All right. Trying to get away from Amber again. Situation again, like that. Never. Me too. Me too. Never. So. Me too. That's that's. Don't freak out if we do have a fight and I walk away. I'm not going to do that. I'm asking you to stay when you feel you are. Also, in the interest I of working it out, I think it's a good idea for us to take a moment or two, or I mean, a moment. I mean, take some time. Take some time to think by ourselves without being, you know, barraged by each other's uh, uh, fucking bullshit, whatevers. I want to interject in here and point out exactly when I think Mr. Fox would have left this conversation, and it's coming really soon. And then it's going to, this argument with, he has so much patience and also lacking in balls to get up and leave the room when she's behaving like this. Uh, my husband would be, I'll tell you when he would be leaving. He, <laughs> not quite yet. I'll, I'll tell you when. I just, I just, let's take a, let's take a break from it and then come back, try and be calm and, and walk through the thing. But, but I'm not going to stand and fight with you. I will I not. You can I call me a coward. I don't you can call that. me anything you want. All those names, do it. But I will not do it again. Please stop asking. I mean, please, can you stop for the sake of this conversation? No, I'm just saying I won't do it again. That's all. Why didn't she want him to keep talking about it? <laughs> for the sake of the conversation. <laughs> because it's being she's recorded. recording. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very inconvenient it's just, of you. It's it's very un, it's very unsettling type of thing that might play at a, at a trial one day. So Please stop talking. And still trying to get away from her continued okay, great. Then footage. Let's take our space and let's not do this anymore because I'm really getting frustrated. There. That's the point where Mr. Fox would have walked away and this would have been over because I would not follow him. My mother gave me very good advice <clears throat> about marriage. She said, never follow the bear into his, ca into his cave. <laughs> Don't do it. And she's absolutely a hundred percent right, ladies. I've been married 21 years, so I know what I'm talking about at this point. That was good advice. Never follow your husband into the cave. If he needs his time away because he's trying to take a break, he's trying to calm down, you best leave him alone. Leave him alone. There's no, it is not okay to berate to harangue, to harass, and to nag. It is not okay. You want a happy marriage? Then don't do those things. Don't follow him into the cage. Uh, cage. Cave. <laughs> How much of this mega pint have I had? I'm not really, enough. Really, really sick of this. He's argument. consistently moving away from confrontation. Okay, so let me go. And you except, okay, he's consistently trying to move away from confrontation, except because he's an abused person, because he's been so abused from childhood through this, 
he doesn't know how to leave. He believes he deserves this. And so he has to stay and be berated some more. He should have left when I pointed out Mr. Fox would have left when he said, I'm sick of this and I need to leave. That's when he would have left and I would have stayed in my corner um, until whenever, till, till things calm down. He doesn't do that. And because she manipulates him into staying, that's when it escalates because of her. Listen. Go and I'll speak to you in a couple hours. Okay. He's waiting for her permission to leave and he doesn't need it. A grown ass man does not need permission from his wife or anybody else to leave a situation he feels uncomfortable in. Uh, but this man believes that he has to stay there because he is abused. Okay. Stop. Why are you saying stop? He's, May he's I so, go? Please, it causes me so much stress when you when you walk away from me with that. It's like you're you don't understand how much worse you're making this. I can't believe this. Please, you're making it worse for me. Okay, I'm sorry for you. You're making it worse for me. What about Johnny? What about Johnny? How about he? How he feels? He's been telling you he has to get away from this and that it's hurting him, but she doesn't care. No cares at all for what he's going through. Zero fucks given. Please, I'm only trying to tell you. Susie, you know, you're causing me immense stress right now when you walk away like that. There's no reason to be mad. Well, I'm... Then say goodbye. <laughs> I haven't walked away. You're not saying goodbye. You won't let me fucking leave. Let me leave. Oh See, that's his mistake. She doesn't have the power to let him leave. He has the power to walk away. And he thinks that she has, that he needs her permission. It's so sad. No man who's a, a, an, a well-adjusted man needs anyone's permission to walk away. Mr. Fox does not need my permission to walk away. And believe me, he has walked away and there is nothing I could do about it. But again, I don't follow after the bear in his cave. I don't do that. That's just damn stupid. Stop rushing me. Stop pushing me in the corner and then poking me with a stick and then saying, why are you saying the words you want me to say? Stop poking me. Stop rushing me. Stop. Uh, I just want to put, I was, no one's poking her. She is making this up. She's, she's using analogy. He's not actually doing anything to her. Let's hear how that started again, because this is insane. Saying goodbye. You won't let me fucking leave. Let me leave. Stop rushing me. Stop pushing me in the corner and then poking me with a stick and then saying, why are you saying the words you want me to say? Stop poking me. Stop rushing me. Stop throwing me against the wall. I'm going, what? You don't like that wall? You don't like the fucking wall? Stop pushing me. He's not pushing her. He's not doing anything to her. She's using an analogy. I said, I need space. I don't want this conversation anymore right now. I need space. And I will take my space. And I think she's doing it for the benefit of the recording. He says, I'm going to take my space. I just wish he would leave. Just leave, Johnny. Whether you like it or not, I will take it. You will take your space. <laughs> she doesn't want her space. She wants to manipulate you. But if you keep I'm not doing halting I'm not doing anything this to you. and continuing I'm with not the continuing rhetoric, it. I'm begging you to stop. I don't. Okay, stop. I'm just. I'm stop. Stop. Now I have to go. Okay? So we will speak to each other in a couple of hours. Okay? I'll give a some kind of revelation makes you feel better you know i hope i do too but uh we'll just see when i get home we'll just talk or we won't talk or we you know we'll finish this or we won't finish it god can you imagine living like this but this is not well <laughs> this is not happiness this stop. is not this please is... stop please please it causes so much I'm gonna die. This oh, she's gonna die. Oh my goodness. So much she's gonna die now. Uh, please. I'm, I feel like I have a heart attack almost every day. Please stop. Please and, and stop doing, doing why, it. Please stop being so fucking mean. Why are you with me? Bully, stop. Please stop. I've been begging not to fight. I just said, can we please have a normal argument? Just even a normal conversation. Fucking normal. She doesn't want a normal argument. This is what she turns all their arguments into. He's the only one being normal. She's not being normal. This is not normal. Amber, honey, this is not normal. You need help. You need to get psychological help because this shit is insane. This is crazy. 
You don't talk like this. I'm dying. I'm going to die. You're killing me. No, no one's killing you because they want to have some time alone. OMG. Argument for the last hour. I've been begging you to please just leave it at that. Let's just go on with our night. I would have been able to come in with you. We would have been able to let it go in a few minutes. No, it she cannot let it go. We just be loud ourselves have mm -mm. fucking normal arguments. Please, you're killing me. With you know, it's very hard to watch him. Look at his face. It's very hard. It's hard for me to hear this. I think it's probably hard for the audience to hear this. I mean, she's obviously in distress. She has issues. She's been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. These are serious things and they cause distress. So I believe that she's distressed. Um, but he is distressed as well. And making him listen to these things over and over again, it's tough. Look at his face. Dang. I mean, I have a hard time listening to this. You're killing me. You're killing me. Oh my goodness. Killing me. <laughs> Let me give you a quick uh, rundown of histrionic personality disorder. Um, defined by the American Psychiatric Association as a personality disorder characterized by a pattern of excessive attention seeking behaviors, including inappropriate seduction and excessive desire for approval. They act very dramatically as though performing before an audience with exaggerated emotions and expressions. Yet, yet appears to lack sincere sincerity. Uh, so if you, this is very dramatic, this goes right to the definition of what we of what she has allegedly been diagnosed with by the expert that we're, we're going to hear from later. <laughs> Wait for that on the witness stand. That's going to be great. Could you uh, please? I want you to just go. I want you to take your medicine or whatever. I'm sorry that I've upset you. Yeah, this I think. Much. He's apologizing. Thank you, Sean. I'm ready to go. Thank you so he much. He didn't do anything to her except yeah. ask for his space. My God. He did, he did nothing. In the beginning. Well, first of all, do you know where you are? He when doesn't sound unreasonable. Officer? Nope. It's not unreasonable to want your space. It's not unreasonable. Okay. In this next clip, this is after they've split and she has gone for a restraining order. After... She got a restraining order against him, which they hand out like candy, by the way. So although for some women who really are going through domestic abuse, they don't get it. So don't ask me what the qualifications are, because some women get it, you know, no problem. And other women don't. So who knows? Uh, I guess it just depends on the judge. She got a restraining order against him. And he then she summoned him to come to San Francisco while he was going through San Francisco to meet with her and talk to her. And he even says in earlier testimony, he didn't know why he was there or why she was summoning him because she had taken out a restraining order against him. And so he was not even supposed to be with her. And I'm sorry, somebody, I'm sorry that they let him do this. Never go see someone that has an actual restraining order against you. Like, don't do that because uh, it's illegal for one. I'm not sure if she tried to use it against him or not, but this is where the recording comes in where, th where they claim that Johnny was trying to hurt himself, going to cut himself with a knife. And she was telling him to stop. Uh, we're not playing that audio because the lawyer even said it was too hard for you to go through it the first time. We're not going to make you listen to it a second time. So she's basically just describing it to him and he's going to explain that audio. So where were you when that recording was taken? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Nailed it. There you go. <laughs> That was in San Francisco at a hotel room. Uh, Follow the cues we of the client. Hotel room so we, that we could finish the discussion that she wanted to have with me. And how did that discussion go? Not particularly <laughs> well. I was quite confused as to why I had been summoned to her. Um, at that point, since all the news was uh, all the news was just about the fact that I had allegedly uh, done all these horrible things to her, and um, so I was talked into going there. I went and met with her in hopes that she would retract um, her. lies that mm. the world was now fed had been fed um say lie every time you can and yes you know good advice she, uh, ready to do that and i couldn't understand why i was there every 
everything had been taken from me. Um, that kills me. My that kills me. Uh, you want to talk about sincerity and her lack of sincerity. Johnny does not have that problem. Johnny is sincere. He comes across very credible, very sincere. When he says, everything has been taken, had been taken from me, I, I believe it. He lost $600 million in a swindle. He lost his, his character that he created with Disney and his franchise. He lost the um, Fantastic Beasts franchise as well. He lost everything. Children couldn't escape the fact that uh, uh, all this had gone down. So, okay. I... can you describe the context around the conversation? Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Duff, ask more. Why were, why were you there? Threatening to hurt yourself in that audio recording. In fact, I wasn't threatening to hurt myself. I thought that Miss Hurd had brought me to uh, San Francisco. At that point, it was clear she was <clears throat> under false pretenses. I don't know what she was after. So I, I had a, a, a knife in my pocket and I just took the knife out and I said, here, cut me. That's, that's what you want to do. Ultimately, you've taken everything. You want my blood, take it. Have my blood. Classic dramatic and Johnny. She said, no, no. And then I said, look, if, 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 if you don't, you're not going to take it. You want it. I know you want it. That's all I've got left. Take it. If she wasn't going to do it, I would have done it. Good logic is, starting, is killing me with the unwrapping of the cigar right now in the middle of this dramatic testimony. Don't do that again. <laughs> it's just insane. Put your microphone on mute, for God's sake. Uh, but this is very dramatic testimony with him saying, it's the only thing you don't have. Take my blood. That's what you want. And I think he's right, frankly. It sounds dramatic, like like uh, Nick said, um, but I'm sure that's how he felt. Because that's psychologically, emotionally where I was. I was at the end. I was broken. Not only had I had to deal with everything from coming in from, you know, arrows from all over the world. Sorry about the crinkling, guys. I don't know what she was trying to do. And then Nick takes so credit for the crinkling. The only answer is here. Cut me. Take my blood. That's all. That's all I've got left to give you. That was my fault. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't. We all saw Good Logic take his wrapper, or put a cigar in his mouth right after that. Nick keeps taking credit for the uh, taking the blame for all the bad sounds. And it, it, obviously. There was no threat to Ms. Heard with that knife. It was about spilling my blood because I thought that's what she, the only thing she didn't have at that point. Mm. All right. Now we're going to the testimony of uh, Johnny Depp has an island. He has an island manager who runs it, who has been a, uh, a witness to some of the bad behavior by Amber Heard. And uh, we're going to hear her testimony about what happened on the island. Oh, and before, I didn't catch this whole thing because it was quite a long testimony, but I found the island manager's testimony to be very compelling. Uh, I'll set it up before we get there. So she said she came into her office and Johnny was in there, the island manager's office. He was like hiding in her office and he seemed upset. She started talking to him and then Amber came in and she was begging him to go back to the house. They were clearly having an argument. The island manager got concerned. Uh, he did leave her office and go back with Amber. She was so concerned that she and another employee got in their little golf cart and went and followed them back to the house. And they, they must have sat outside and they heard loud screaming arguments inside. They heard Amber screaming inside. They waited outside the house. Johnny came out of the house. Neither one of them saw the, uh, the two employees. And that's where we pick up her testimony. So Johnny has come back out of the house. He's now trying to escape Amber for the second time this night in front of a witness, two witnesses. Mineral spirits about yay big and uh, heaved it at me and uh, it, it uh, struck me on the bridge of the nose and the right there you know the forehead and what did you say in response when miss heard said tell the world johnny tell them johnny depp 
I, Johnny Depp, a man, I'm a victim to of domestic violence. I said, yes, I am. So powerful. I don't know why that skipped over the, I guess we'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. That was uh, the island manager comes later. Uh, now we're going to go to the butler in London who talks about um, fights that he witnessed. Ben King. Again, I would, the couple were in the, the TV room, I think, which was off the main sitting room early evening. And I was going about my early evening duties, replenishing drinks close by, um, you know, lighting the fire. Light I want a butler. I want, I want an English butler so bad. Someone to light candles for me at night and refill my drinks and light the fire. Dang, what a life. Lighting candles, whatever it might have been. Lighting candles. I was close enough to, to hear Miss Hurd say, why did you take your hand away from me, Johnny? Don't you, don't you love me anymore? Like, not in a playful way, I might add. Um... <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Case misunderstood. Yeah, Stereotypical British. These two chuckleheads talk over almost his entire testimony. They drive me crazy. Guys, put your microphones on friggin' mute next time. It kind of launched from that point. And at one point, Mr. Depp got up and went to the bathroom or went upstairs, and I was sort of scuttling around out of the way because I, you know, wasn't there listening. I was just there doing my stuff in and around them yeah it's a strange sort of banal way to start an argument but how would you describe miss Hurd's tone when she said um why did you take your hand away johnny accusatory spoiled teenage child mm. maybe that mm. they do okay. pretty, you know not playfully let's put it that way more angrily spoiled teenage child and now here's Johnny trying to get away from Amber in Australia. Did you observe any arguments? Then she chopped his finger off. I got several. Uh, ben, the butler, by the way, went with them to Australia. So this is now his testimony of the arguments he saw in Australia. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about those? Um, yes. <laughs> a similar pattern, it seemed, to London arguments uh, started in a in the TV room, funnily enough, um, loud, loud voices and uh, Mr. Depp leaving the room, shutting the door, going to another room to play his guitar or you know, to a bathroom, whatever. Um, and Miss Heard closely following and opening the door or certainly rapping on the door. Okay, so corroboration that what Johnny says he does now there's a second, another witness who says he does this, that he goes away from her, that he tries to escape from her, that he goes to play his guitar, or he goes to um, into another room and she follows him and bangs on the door. Again, ladies, don't follow the bear into the cave. This is a disaster, a disaster. You will never get your way like this, ever. Now we're going to get to the bloodbath in Australia uh, where Johnny's finger got cut off. How would you describe her demeanor? Hysterical, probably the best way to describe it. Um, so I spoke to David Kipper, who was in the kitchen area. Oh, that's seemingly not a real rummaging name. through a bin. Um, David Kipper he said he was that Mr. Depp had sustained an injury to his finger, one of his fingers, and he was looking for the <laughs> fingertip. That looking for it. it. Looking for the finger. Suffered. As you do. Just not the whole finger, just hey, the tip. I said, I said, well, should I help you? you know, <laughs> if one would. And he said, yeah, that would be a good idea. I left him in the kitchen. He said there was a lot lot more damage downstairs. So I, I went to, you know, we split up. He was left him in the kitchen. I went downstairs to, to search. Uh, did, at some point, was Mr. Depp's fingertip found? Yes. Who found it? I did. And oh, where did you nice find? inflection downstairs in that the bar area, the um, the games room bar area. Again, this is corroboration to Johnny's description of how this happened. He did not cut it off in a sliding door like he told the doctor because he was trying to protect Amber. 
but she threw a vodka bottle at him. And that's evidenced by the cleanup that the butler did and all the things he witnessed and the damage he witnessed. Um, I know that the defense is going to try and say that, that he cut off his own finger. That's what they've been trying to get at this whole time. Uh, but the evidence so far does not support that. I mean, we'll see what the defense puts up, but I don't believe it. <laughs> I believe that, that all these people are telling the truth, um, that they all witnessed her bad behavior. They witnessed her abusiveness. They witnessed Johnny Hurt. And um, God, just wait. It gets worse. And the bottles... If this was the bar and I'm sitting here like this, she would grab the bottle and she would go there. She went there. And so I was leaning like this in the chair, looking at her. First bottle went, then got the other bottle shot. Takes the second bottle, which is the larger one. I'm in this position again, and my, my hand is on the edge of the the bar like like that you know, leaning over the fingers like that and uh, she threw the large bottle and it made contact and shattered uh, everywhere and I, I honestly didn't I didn't feel the pain at first at all I felt no pain whatsoever what I felt was, um, I felt heat. I felt heat and I felt um, as if something were dripping down my hand, you know. Um, and then I looked down and realized that the, the, the tip of my finger had been severed and uh, I was looking directly at my bones mm. sticking out and uh, the, the, the meaty portion of your, the inside of your finger, the, um, and it was, it, blood was just uh, pouring out. And at that point, I, 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 I think that I went into some sort of, I, I don't know what a nervous. Her face, her face, I just have to make a comment on this. She's trying very hard to portray something and it's, it's failing really hard. She's portray, trying to portray maybe sadness. Uh, but there's just nothing behind those eyes. Uh, it's it's all an act. At least that's what I see. I see, I see an act. Breakdown feels like, but that's probably the closest that I've ever been. I didn't. Nothing made sense, and I knew in my mind and in my heart, this is this is not life. Mm -mm. This is not life. <laughs> no one should have to go through this. Mm -mm. Nope. And now we're going to go back to Ben King. He's going to tell us about what he yes, saw afterwards. So I down the stairs, uh, and there's a bit of damage down the steps. That big chunk had been taken out of the marble staircase. Um, on my How does a big chunk get taken out of the marble staircase? What would you have to throw at a marble staircase to break some of it? This had to have been some kind of battle. I went uh, down remnants of what looked like a plant pot or something around a it. A potted smashed. plant smashed. Walking down into the bar, I could see the damage that Dr. Kipper had told me about. A broken ping pong table sort of collapsed onto the floor and lots of glass and broken glass and cans strewn around the... She didn't have a mark on her, by the way. Amber walked away from that without a mark on her, without a scratch. Uh, I think she had two. I think that it came out later and I don't have it here. She had two scratch marks on her arm that uh, the butler said looked very uniform, as in self self harm. Bar area. 
and where exactly was the finger in the bar area? Directly below the bar, I mean, the bar was set up like a conventional bar uh, that stuck out from a wall and that with a marble top, uh, there's a big chunk out of that as well, like on the staircase. A big chunk out of the Directly bar. Directly at the end of marble. the bar. Marble. There was a scrunched up piece of kitchen paper, if you like, tissue, um, with lots of blood around it, on it. So I thought that was probably a pretty good place to look. And it, it was within that scrunched up piece of paper on the tiled floor at the end of the bar, the base of the bar by one of the bar stools. So the finger is in the bar where Johnny said he got his finger cut off with the bottle. And there's, there's uh, he's about to tell you that there's, he'll cor corroborate some more of uh, Johnny's story right now. A uh, fair bit. Uh, on the floor around the area, there were puddles of what smelled like alcohol to me. There were mm, puddles of alcohol. Several, several drinking glasses, a couple of bottles. One was a Stoliknaya vodka bottle. She threw um, two bottles, remember? And at the end of the bar, on the as I said, there was a big chunk out of the bar itself, the bar marble top. Cripes. Uh, at the end of that, the bar, there was plaster damage right at the end of the bar on the wall. Mm. Uh, behind the bar, that smashed and cracked. Mirror, there's a blue mirror that, that stretched that whole span of behind the bar. Like Lots of cans it? again behind the bar on the floor. Broken window at the end of the bar. Mm. And more plastered work damage on the wall above the sink. It was sort of a kitchenette bar, if you like, as well. Was that damage there when you set up the house? You Follow mentioned up. a bottle of vodka. Was the vodka bottle in there? Right. No. <laughs> No. Nothing was really intact. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the top of a bottle was like, it had a label on it, which is how I knew it as a Stolik Naya bottle. It had that sort of squiggly S. Stolik Naya. He uh, says it the right way. Yellow. Brandy that was oh. shattered. It was horrible. So, uh, there was a large chunk of a, a bottle, which I guess was the rest of that. And several other, I mean, lots of other broken glass around the area. Okay. This is the part that I set up before when I was wrong. This is the island manager uh, who, okay, is waiting outside the house with the other witness because they were worried about Johnny. They didn't want him to go back to the house alone. And now he comes out of the house. And this is what happens after that. Of why, you know, that we were there. I, they need, neither Johnny nor Amber knew that we were there. Um, he proceeded to uh, walk back to the John Deere and um she again walked he was just sitting in the seat amber came up to him and was asking him to come back in the house that she was sorry please come back in the house um and uh, he, he didn't come out of the seat and she was hugging and kissing him and i love you i love you she was telling him i loved you um he didn't react johnny sat there um eventually uh got out of the john deere um, and proceeded to start to walk away. At that time, Amber started to grab at him and his shirt and, and, and trying to pull him back to the house, um, just, just basically viciously trying to pull him back and, and get him back to the house and, 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 and yelling at him. And at that point, I, I was between them and uh, felt it was best, and I was getting worried about what was going to happen, and it was best that... Um, I remove him from the situation. And so um, CJ took Amber back to the house and I walked Johnny over to the cafe, which was basically 30 seconds away from, from the house because it was the only place I could take him to at the time. And you ma imagine that this man is in so much danger from this woman that his manager, a woman herself, is so concerned about him that she intervenes between the two of them to take him away and get him to a safe place. This is mind blowing stuff. And, and this is employee after employee after employee. And the defense is trying to make the argument that these employees are all on Johnny's side because they're on Johnny's payroll. Well, Ben King wasn't on Jenny, Johnny's payroll. He was paid by Disney. But even if they were on Johnny's payroll, are we to believe that all these people are lying? That they all have nefarious reasons 
that they all are in cahoots against Amber? For what reason? For what reason would these people put commit perjury? I find them all, I find them to be all very credible. You mentioned that Ms. Heard was viciously trying to pull Mr. Depp back. Can you explain what you mean by that? Um, it, it was like clawing, grabbing his clothes, grabbing his hair, trying to like pull him back, mm. like an angry, like he was leaving and come back. He couldn't leave in the vehicle because the keys had been taken out. She took the keys. What does that sound like to you? Those of you who have been, I know there are a lot of you in my audience who are, have been victims of domestic abuse, taking keys, taking phones, sound familiar so that you can't leave so that you don't have a means of escape. So he was in a vehicle, he had keys, but she took the keys. I find that to be incredibly telling. So there was, there wasn't a way for Johnny to drive away. The only way was for him to, to walk, for him to walk away. And, um, it uh, wasn't, um, a pleasant situation of, of wanting him to, to not leave. And, um, angry and yelling and, and just yelling, you know, come back, come back, don't leave. Um, and things like that. At any point, did Mr. Depp, um, hit or touch Ms. Heard? Objection leading. All right. Seeing the objection. That's not a Ms. leading Roberts, question. Um, um, how did Mr. Depp react to Ms. Heard viciously grabbing him? He, he didn't, uh, he stood there with his arms by his side and, um, he he didn't do anything. Would have done anything to have stopped. Outside of taking anything to some physical level. I disagreed with that wholeheartedly. That's not me. It's not who I've ever been. It's not who I'll ever be. So do you think that as Amber is attacking him, viciously pulling his hair, scratching, pulling his shirt, and he's standing there and witness testimony says arms at his side. And the reason I replayed that bit about him saying that's not me, that's not who I've ever been, is to show you that there's corroboration from witnesses. Witnesses who I don't think have any reason to lie. More hurting of Johnny on the island. I when we went back to the cafe, he had a, a mark across the bridge of his nose. Mineral spirits about yay big and uh, heaved it at me and uh, it, it uh, struck me on the bridge of the nose. How many injuries does this and guy the, have to sustain? The, uh, you know, the forehead. Mm. Um, I Ooh. got Eyewitness. a bag of ice to put on, his, uh, on it to, so that it wouldn't swell. Um, just to make sure that it wasn't bleeding. And I, he walked over to the love seat at the cafe and he laid down and um, went to sleep. And CJ came back over and um, I asked CJ to stay there for the remainder of the evening, for the remainder of the morning. Um, and I left CJ inside the cafe and I left Johnny on the couch. Imagine, she's so concerned that Amber is a danger she had someone stay with him in the office, in the cafe, all night to make sure Amber didn't come back and finish the job. This woman is scary. All right, the next uh, witness coming up is the doctor who spent a considerable amount of time with Amber uh, and diagnosed her with, the, uh, with some personality disorders. Now, I have some expertise here because I've done a lot of uh, studying and journalism in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and family court corruption, where these forensic psychologists have been under my microscope. And uh, for the most part, I think forensic psychology is, is uh, total bullshit. And I think that a lot of these forensic psychologists are, um, are cottage industry uh, crooks. And however... And the reason why I think that is because many of them, especially in St. Louis, they work in this little cabal of just a few of them who are called on all the time and appointed by the court to uh, diagnose people, mo mostly women, with borderline personality disorder. And then, you know, they get ruled against in court based on this diagnosis. And borderline personality disorder is, is pretty rare. 
But the problem I have with the people in St. Louis doing this is that one particular psychologist, his name is Dr. Reed, he uses the MMPI to diagnose. It's one test. It has 500 questions. It is not meant to be a diagnosis. It is supposed to be a tool to help diagnose, but you're supposed to use many other things records, behavior, interviews, et cetera. This man did not do any of that with these other people I'm talking about in St. Louis. Um, however, the psychologist that, the forensic psychologist that they hired to diagnose Amber actually did spend a considerable amount of time with her and looked at all kinds of other evidence. And she even goes into testimony, I don't think I have it here, but she did say in testimony that it's not just the MMPI that she uses. So that's, I give her credit for that. I think that um, maybe she's not a quack. Um, I, I found her pretty credible. Let's watch breaks. So we spent seven hours together on the first day, December 10th, um, not necessarily together because there was a one hour lunch break and about a half hour with breaks split up through the day. And then on the 17th, we spent a little more than eight hours in the evaluation from start to finish with a one hour break and another half oh. hour of breaks distributed throughout the day. Okay. And in St. Louis, the forensic psychologist there would spend maybe 30 minutes with the women that they diagnosed or none, no time at all. None, none at all. So the fact that she spent seven hours one day and eight hours the next day with Amber, that's a considerable amount of time. That's actually considerably a lot more time than some of the forensic psychologists I've seen doing these forensic reports. Um, so that's quite a bit of time that she spent with Amber and her face. As, the res as a result she hates of the work this woman. you performed, did you form any opinions with respect to Ms. Hurd? I did. What were uh -oh. those opinions? I, uh, the results of Ms. Hurd's evaluation supported two diagnoses, borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> what is? Uh, there Nick. was information that supported it from multiple sources. Um, I conducted testing, including um, one of the main tests that I used. Uh, she obtained scores that were consistent with those diagnoses. And then I also that would be the um, MMPI. There was evidence of those diagnoses in her records and in her self-report. So she also looked in her medical records, her psychological records from two of her doctors. She did the MMPI and she did another test for PTSD, uh, which came up that she was exaggerating the PTSD and she was underreporting on the MMPI, her psychological problems. Very interesting. All right, Amber's temper. Uh, but Dr. Cohen's records, I did reverse it. Uh, he actually refers to this reactivity quite a bit and to Ms. Hurd's temper. And that, that temper, it's often branded, or being hot-headed, is really characteristic of uh, borderline personality disorder, um, as is their ch very charming, personable nature. It's, it's, this is a disorder of contradictions. Uh, in Nurse Filotti's notes, um, she had, I thought there was something interesting. She references a night when they're out to dinner, I believe in London, and she provided positive reinforcement to Ms. Hurd because Ms. Hurd had been uh, disappointed by a mistake made by the server. And it sort of references how previously she might have criticized the server and be become upset by that. Um, and that she didn't this time. And so that that oh. had been some sort of a, Bully for a her. step forward. Very um, proud of herself for not criticizing the help. The help. <laughs> oh, my God. People who abuse people in the service industry should be relocated uh, to a colony on Mars. And I'm sorry, but it, the fact that it's in her records that she would normally jump down the throat of a waiter or a server who made a mistake, that should tell you all you need to know about Amber Heard right there. Uh, there was also an indication actually in Dr. Hughes's, uh, Dr. Hughes is a forensic psychologist who had been appointed by Ms. Heard to conduct as an evaluation as well. In Ms. Hughes's interview of Ms. Heard, Ms. Heard disclosed that she had cut her arm in the past, which is a typical reactive type of thing. Somebody self-harm with this diagnosis can do. It's one of the symptoms. What struck me was Ms. Raquel Pennington's testimony. Um, she's a former friend of Ms. Hurd's, and 
she indicated, she told a story about, I suppose they were shopping for Thanksgiving accoutrements, something to prepare for Thanksgiving. And Ms. Hurd struck her in the face, <laughs> sort of out wow. of the blue, um, <laughs> which intense. Is, I, I thought was interesting because that is one of those signs of borderline personality disorder where if a, if a friend or a loved one isn't meeting your needs in that moment, um, borderline people with borderline personality disorder can be very caring in their relationships as long as their needs are being met they feel that their needs should be met when they want them met um, at a specific level and if they're not then that anger that sense of harm causes them to react so the striking Ms. Pennington per Ms. Pennington's report in the declaration or the testimony I thought was pretty consistent but because the person with borderline personality disorder, first of all, they're more sensitive to things. They feel distress more strongly, and then that distress lasts longer. So these types of blow-ups go on forever. And it just like we have heard these arguments between her and Johnny, which are so hard to listen to because it just goes on forever and he doesn't leave and she just keeps on going and going. Oh God. It's very cyclic. It feels like you just can't get a resolution and eventually the partner will try to leave, will want to leave to take a break. It wears <laughs> them down. And that's when the borderline might explode mm -hmm. and act very aggressively or violently to try to prevent them from leaving. Mm -hmm. Why are you saying stop? May he's, he's I so, go? Please, it causes me so much stress when you when you walk away from me. With that, it's like you're you don't understand how much worse you're making this. I can't believe it. Please, you're making it worse for me. Okay, I'm sorry for you. Please, I'm only trying to tell you, so that you know, you're causing me immense stress right now when you walk away like that. There's no reason to be mad. Well, then say goodbye. <laughs> I haven't walked away. You're not saying goodbye. You won't let me fucking leave. Let me leave. Oh oh Stop rushing me. Stop pushing me in the corner and then poking me with a stick oh and then God. saying, why are you saying the words you want me to say? Stop poking me. Stop exactly like me. the Stop doctor said. The wall. I'm going, what? You don't like that wall? You don't like the fucking wall? Stop pushing me. This is not, bro. Well, this is not happiness. This is Stop, not. This please. Is... Stop. Please. Please. You're good. I'm gonna die. This a I'm gonna fucking die. Oh my goodness! So much stress. Please stop. Please, I I feel like I have a heart attack almost every day. Please stop. Please and, and stop doing, doing why, it. Please stop. He's so fucking mean. Why are you fucking with me? Bully, stop. Who's the bully? Please stop. I've been begging you not to fight. I just said, can we please have a normal argument? Just even a normal conversation, like a normal argument. And for the last hour, I've been begging you to please just leave it at that. What did you say in response when Miss Heard said, tell the world, Johnny, tell them Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, a man, I'm a victim too of domestic violence? I said, yes, I am. What do you think? I guess this was good timing because I just finished my mega pint of uh, wine and good time to end there on a um, kind of a poignant and sad note. Uh, I'm not sure when the defense is going to start with their with their witnesses uh, and when Amber is going to take the stand. I'm assuming she is going to. It would be totally ridiculous for her not to. Um, and if when she does, I'm actually thinking about live streaming it uh, and letting you guys come on and comment with me. Uh, we'll just sit and watch it together because um, I'm not doing anything anyway. That's all I'm doing is watching this thing because I can't stop. So let me know in the comments below what you thought about that. I just thought I would put together my favorite parts and uh, just give you a, a, some insight into what I've been seeing. And I personally think that if Amber, if Amber's defense team doesn't have uh equal or more horrifying evidence that she has suffered major injury, it's over for her. Um, it's over for her in, in public opinion, for sure. Uh, I think the defamation case is going to be harder uh, for Johnny to win. Um, although, I think if the jury is anything like me, and I think they are, uh, it's uh, it's over for her. So we'll see. 
All right. Uh, everybody take care. Make sure that you check out the uh, merch store because that is a lot of fun. There's a ton of stuff there. Please support the channel. And uh, I will talk to you again soon. Like and subscribe, everybody.